Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be mounting a new vise in our shop. Got this central machinery vise from Harbor Freight. It's a six inch uh, swivel vise. It has a six inch jaw opening, 360 swivel base. Uh, it was only like 85 bucks at uh, Harbor Freight. Going to be swapping out this old little Olympia four inch uh, bench vise. This thing here is real hard to turn. Tried lubing it up. It's just seen its day. Plus it's kind of small. So I already took the little screws that were mounted here to the bench. So we'll get that out of the way and then we'll get this one opened up, set it in place, mark our holes for uh, mounting it. And I got some 5 16 bolts here with washers and nuts. So we'll get this mounted up and we'll test it out. There it is out of the package. Pretty nice. Yeah, I figure I don't need anything real fancy as far as a vice goes. It's just to hold something while you're working on it. And that turns real nice and smooth. Set it beside the uh, old one here. Let's see a difference. Definitely uh, going up a notch. Alright, so I'll get this in position here where I want it. We'll mark our hole locations and we'll drill it and get it mounted. Okay, right here is where I want it. So I'll go ahead and mark our mounting holes. Now I got blocking all the way over here. So the front two will be down either in a 2x6 or a 2x4 because there's a 2x4 butted up against this on the back side. The only one that's going to go through uh, the two layers of plywood is going to be this one right back here. So that one there. We got our bolt with the washer and then we got our washer with the nut. That will go right here and then in the front I got two uh, two lag bolts here that we're just going to drill down right into the 2x6 or 2x4 let me see what, what we got here yeah we got 2x4 in the back and a 2x4 right here at the front and it just has this cover board there and it's actually a toe kick from a kitchen cabinet that or a filler board that somebody mounted on the front just to cover up the uh, two by fours so we'll put these two lag bolts in the front and this one in the back all right I got all the holes drilled got our hole right down there for our lag in the back got that one and that one so we'll get the front two started and then we'll drop the back lag down and then come up here from underneath and we'll get the uh, washer and the nut on. All right. Don't want to tighten that all the way just yet. And we'll do the same thing over here with this one. That way if we need to move anything a little bit just so all the holes line up. Ok, 
okay on our back one. See if we gotta slide the vise over just a hair. Get that lined up. Drop our two and a half inch bolt through. And see what we got coming through the bottom. There it is. All right, I got the nut started here with the washer for that back one. Uh, these nuts here, um, they have the nylon in them, which helps prevent from backing off. So they're good nuts to use. So we'll just get everything tightened up and we'll test her out. back one uh, those nuts are half inch so I'm just gonna hold my Klein 7 and one up from underneath uh, tighten it down with the half inch uh, DeWalt bit thing solid bolt underneath and we'll go ahead and just snug up all the rest and then if you want to swivel right now these are unlocked so turn it any direction you need if you want to work on this side of the bench for example or the long way depending on what you're working on or what you're cutting and then we'll just tighten these down okay now we'll tighten this down there we go thing's solid Nice and smooth. So definitely a nice vice for uh, 85 bucks. One other thing I grabbed at Harbor Freight was this cool uh, glove holder. They have them in all different colors. They're magnetic. Uh, you can either hang it on the wall like I did here and it has four different uh, magnets here in each corner. You can stick it on the side of your toolbox or side your van, truck, whatever. Uh, but I just threw it on the wall here and it matches my SDS book and my fireproof cabinet. So a lot better than having the gloves just sitting on the shelf. So I thought that was cool. All right, on to the next one. All right, on this one here, we got a clogged drain. See? standing water down here in the pipe this is where the condensate line drains into and our relief off the water tank is piped over to the floor drain as well see how release a little bit of water see see it rise So we got the little Ryobi drain snake, it's a quarter inch cable, we'll run that down and the clog shouldn't be too far away, probably about a foot or so, 
where this three inch uh, reduces down to inch and a half. It's normally where they clog up. So we'll get our little snake and we'll run it through and open it up. You're draining already. I was able to poke through it just with the snake alone. Normally just dryer lint and dust that the uh, air handler draws in. You can see all the dust or dryer lint all over the water heater and our drain pan and on the pipe. But I'm still gonna run the snake through here just to make sure it's cleaned out good. the end of our cable. through it. Make sure it doesn't back up. good to go all right on to the next one all right on this one here we got a toilet that just keeps on running as you can see the water uh, past the uh, flush valve and just running down trickling inside the bowl I flushed it several times tried to adjust the ball cock here the, the water level and no matter what even if it's pretty much starts filling up at the line it just constantly keeps trickling in so gonna get rid of the old ball cock and go with a 400a fill valve Okay, now I'm just gonna break the nut loose that holds the fill valve to the tank. Okay, now before we drop that, 
nut down and pull the old fill valve out. Grab our new fill valve and we'll get it set up. Okay, here's our new one. Just open up the package, grab the nut out of here. The rest of this is trash. Grab the hose. Slide it on, got our seal in place. Now, once we pull the old one out, we'll be ready to drop this one in. So. Okay, now I'm just backing off the nut on the bottom of this old fill valve. I got a little extra room underneath here on this one so that way when I pull this up out my little bucket is going to catch a good bit of the water. Normally we don't get that lucky but this one here supply line uh, is off to the side a little bit so should be able to catch most of this water. New fill valve. you have it where you want it, go ahead and snug it up. Now I'm just going to reconnect the supply line. See about how much we need, then we'll cut off and drop it down here in this tube. Okay, I'm gonna cut it right about here. Alright, now we'll turn the water on, test it out, and set our water level. Now I know I'm going to need to lower the float for it to stop on that line, so I'm going to turn this adjustment knob to lower it some now. I just know that from doing quite a few of these throughout the property, at the height that these uh, come out of the box, lowering that arm will get us close, and we'll fine tune it. See the water line there. Well, it actually stopped pretty pretty close to the line there. So flush it. Perfect. I'm good with that. And looks like we don't have any leaks. It's going to wipe up any water that's down there from when I pulled out the old one. And call this one good. 
All right. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.